Now that we've read the passage, let's see if we can answer the questions. In the context of the passage, the author's use of the phrase, her light step flying to keep time with his long stride, lines four to five, is primarily meant to convey the idea that, so that's right over here, lines four to five. So her light step, her light step flying to keep time with his long stride. So remember, this is, you know, Maddie at Silver had lived under Ethan's roof for a year, and from early morning till they met at supper, he had frequent chances of seeing her, but no moments in her company were comparable to those when, so he's talking about a really good time, when her arm in his and her light step flying to keep time with his long stride, they walked back through the night to the farm. So you kind of imagine, you know, he's this, you know, this this guy and he's these long long strides and you know he's not normal he's not used to being kind of connected to people and being happy around people but then there's her and her light step flying to keep time with his so you imagine this person and they're kind of having these enthusiastic spirited conversations i mean we read the whole passage about nature and about science and and about feeling this connection so yeah this first choice ethan and maddie share a powerful enthusiasm that looks like what's what's being described. I mean, in fact, as we read on, we realize that that's at least what Ethan at the time thought was going on. B, Maddie strives to match the speed at which Ethan works. Well, no, that would be the case if like they were saying that he has this long stride and she was having trouble and the whole passage was about her having trouble doing all the work in the house that, that she wants him to do and all of that. But that's not what it's about. The whole passage is about this powerful enthusiasm. And it really starts from, from, from these early lines where we're talking about, you know, this is the, the time that he liked being around her and this connection and, and her, her light steps flying to keep time with his long stride. You know, you're kinda, kinda, they're, they're having fun, the spirited, passionate conversations in the night. Maddie and Ethan playfully compete with each other. Compete. Well, no, the, the spirit of competition doesn't really play out here. In fact, most of what he kind of talks about, he likes being like this teacher, pro profes professorial figure, this, this father figure kind of uh, that, that likes to awaken her, her appreciation of the planet. So it doesn't really seem like a competitive or even a playfully competitive relationship. It's really she, he's the teacher, at least he thinks he's the teacher, and she's the student who's appreciating him and, and, and nature. Ethan walks at a pace that frustrates Maddie. Well, no, nothing in the passage makes us think that, or at least in the beginning, that Maddie somehow got frustrated by Ethan. It sounds like, you know, at least at, at over at those times, you know, when, when he's, he's, he's reminiscing about it, that, that he believes that she's really enjoying all of this. So I would definitely go with A. Let's go to the next question. The description in the first paragraph indicates that what Ethan values most about Maddie is her fitness for farm labor, no, he, in fact, he, he says right over here, she don't look much on housework, so it's not going to be that. Vivacious youth? Um, that's possible. I mean, she, she, she is this kind of youthful uh, spirit that's entered in his life. Receptive nature, freedom from worry. So the receptive nature is interesting, too, because he talks in the whole passage about how open she is about learning about the stars and about geology and whatever else. Well, let's listen to see. But she don't look much on housework, but she ain't a fretter anyhow. But then they say, but it was not only that the coming to his house of a bit of hopeful young life was like the light lighting of a fire on a cold breath. So it's, he's saying it wasn't only essentially her vivacious youth. The girl was more than the bright, serviceable creature he had thought her. She had an eye to see and an ear to hear. He could show her things and tell her things and taste the bliss of feeling that all he imparted left long reverberations, reverberations and echoes he could wake at will. So this is, you know, this, it starts off saying, look, it didn't look like she was, you know, necessarily, uh, you know, the, 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 the most impressive person to look at from a, from a labor point of view. And sure, she had vivacious shoes, but that wasn't, that wasn't it. The really powerful thing about her is she had an eye to see and an ear to hear. He could show her things and tell her things and taste the bliss of feeling that all he imparted left long reverberations and echoes he could wake at will. So it really is about the receptive nature. She, she was open to these things that he wanted to teach her, and she was, at, he, at least he thought, excited about these things. Question four. Which choice provides the best evidence for the answer to the previous question? Well, actually, I would, I would, uh, I would, I would let's see. I, I think I highlighted them. She had, she had, the girl was more than the bright, serviceable creature he had thought her. She had an eye to see and an ear to hear. He could show her things and tell her things. 
So let's see, which of these are that? This, this is like line 15 through 16, 17, 18. That's, that's actually, I highlighted, happened to highlight those exact lines. I like to do these, as you can tell, in real time so that I'm experiencing it as you would experience it. But luckily, I literally, well, anyway, you get, you get the point. This is the line that's how, these are the lines that say that she was receptive. She had an eye to see and an ear to hear. He could show her things and tell her things. So definitely go with that. The author includes the descriptions of the sunset, the clouds, and the hemlock shadows. Hemlock is a type of plant. So the shadows of the plants it's were nature. So lines 41, 43. So let's go down to lines 41, line 41, 43. And I'll start reading a little early. And there were other sensations, less definable but more exquisite. More exquisite. So before he's talking about kind of science of the stars and, and, and you know, being able to think about uh, what's in the fossil record and all of that. And, but then they're saying, and there were other sensations, less definable but more exquisite, which drew them together with the shock of silent joy. The cold red of sunset behind the winter hills, the flight of cloud flocks over slopes of golden stubble, or the intensely blue shadows of hemlock on sunlit snow, snow. When she said to him once, it looked just as if it was painted. So this is just that kind of that in, incredible, I mean, I, I, I feel it. Maybe I should have hung out with, with, with Ethan Frome. If he, <laughs> but, 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 but when you're in nature, there's this indescribable feeling of how it just connects with you, the beauty of it all. So this is what they're describing over here when we're talking about the sunset, the clouds, the hemlock shadows. So it suggests the peacefulness of the natural world. Oh, yeah, yeah. Emphasize the acuteness of two character sensations. Yeah, I like that because he's talking about him, you know, in the passage we read it, that he was wondering, is he the only person who feels so strongly about nature and, and the beauty of, of the natural world? But he's, at, at the time, he said, but, but I, I think I found someone in this Maddie who, who, who connects with this, this sensation, who understands it. Foreshadowing the decline of the fortunes of two characters? No, this isn't that. This is about the, their connection. Offer a sense of how fleeting time can be. No, no, this was about both of them. You know, he, him feeling this this very basic uh, uh, passion for everything around him, and uh, this almost indescribable thing, and her connecting with it. And you know, when she says it looks just as if it was painted, he feels that she had just perfectly described uh, what what he was feeling. These sensations. So I definitely, I definitely would go with B.